Hi guys! In today's video, we're going to be looking at three beautiful ground covers for your garden. I'm Marlene and welcome to my home and garden channel. The first one that we're going to be looking at is called Mountain Phlox. You may hear it referred to as Creeping Phlox or just Phlox. And they are absolutely beautiful. Whether it's for your rock garden, a regular garden, or a fairy tale garden, these are absolutely suitable. They like full sun to partial shade, but they need to get at least six hours of sun. And as you can see right here, butterflies love them too. I was really surprised that this little visitor came by so early in the season because I hadn't even cleaned up my garden beds yet. <laughs> you can still see a little debris here and there. And some of the flowers hadn't even come out as yet, but there he was, you know, enjoying the nectar. It also attracts early hummingbirds as well and other pollinators. It's just such a beautiful plant to have. And it lasts usually a few weeks in the early spring and grows in zones 7 through 10. And this is what it looks like here when it's actually in full bloom. Isn't that gorgeous? And as you can see, it actually cascades over the rocks. So it gives it that nice, beautiful feeling. And it's not very invasive either. You know, like other plants, like my lilies are right there. And they're growing right there with it. Any little beer spots that you see in there is because I wanted it to be that way. I didn't try to propagate it, you know, for other plants. And now as far as propagation goes, um, water doesn't seem to work very well for this one. Um, and I think it's just the nature of the plant, the way it is. It just was not suitable for this one. The best way I find for this one is just to have the plant propagate itself. Where you'll see that we have a few little ones coming off there. And this is like towards the end of the garden. And then basically what you do is just go in and get those individual ones and put them in different areas. So you just basically get your trowel and dig in and maybe go a little bit, you know, wider and deeper than I did here. And just lift it out, you know, when the soil is moist. And you can always have it, um, you know, put in different areas. And these you'll want to plant them like about 12 inches apart because they do spread over time. And this is how it would look um, at your garden center. This is actually a lavender version here. And it's a little bit higher um, species than the one that I have. Um, and you can split them too, so that way you get to save a little bit of money on that. And I'll also put a link in the description box as well in reference to getting seeds if you wanted to get seeds online. They're just so beautiful. And look at this one right here. This is actually a Dianthus, Pixie Dianthus. And as you can see, I put it in a pot in this case. And, you know, that's definitely an option as well. It doesn't necessarily have to go, you know, like in your flower bed. You can put it in a pot. And it attracts butterflies as well. It also attracts hummingbirds. Sometimes you see like little ants on there. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And it's not very invasive either. I did put some plant food on these though to get them, you know, to be dense like that these ones right here are the ones that are in my flower bed not as dense and there's some wild strawberries growing in there so i'll need to get those pulled out but it comes out pretty easily and then you know they'll look a little bit more uniform but it just goes to show you know how versatile the plant is um, just before they start blooming or in the fall this is what they look like here and then to propagate this one you would just you know like snip some of the parts off at the end that are coming over there and just plant them in fresh soil and give them some food after a few days have passed, you know, to encourage them. So even when it's not blooming, it still looks pretty good and healthy in your garden. And guys, if you've made it this far in the video, I do hope that you will hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell for future floral topics. And this is what it looks like here when you have both of them together. And this one is a lighter pink version of the Dianthus. It has a little a few white ones mixed in there. And that's just how it grew, you know, over time. A little bit of pink here, a little darker pink, and a little white in there as well. So I thought it blended really well together. And this is how they were selling um, in my garden center. And these were actually in four inch containers for $1.58 for each. Um, and of course, you can always get seeds online for those as well too. This right here is a juga, but this one I find to be very invasive. 
they were at the side of my house in one of the flower beds and I actually took them out because they were smothering um, the iris so you know just be careful with this one and know that if it's something that you want to spread everywhere then it's definitely perfect for you and this is what it looks like right here you know before they bloom when they're just starting out they have a more green color but as they age then you see that they get or I should say mature they get more purple in color so when they're not blooming you'll still have a nice little color there in your garden so I hope that this gave you some good ideas of ground covers for your garden you can leave me a note in the comments and if you or you would try it you know what type of garden you have I do wish you all the best in your garden I thank you so much for watching and I do hope to see you in my next video. Have a wonderful day.